today's training. I would like to give the floor to my colleague, uh, Ms. Vasiliki Kalodimu, who is the widening uh, NCP and uh, NCP for uh, enhancing European uh, research uh, area. Uh, and also during, uh, Vasiliki will explain the process, but during the training, we will also have coordinator of the um, NCP Widera Net. Uh, Prax is also a partner of the of this NCP project for uh, widening. So I would like to give the floor to Vasiliki and to also uh, welcome you all again and wish a fruitful training for today. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Katarina. Um, I'd like to welcome all participants. Uh, my name is Vasiliki Kalodimu. I'm a, I'm a Widera NCP from Horizon Europe. Um, uh, before we proceed, I would like to extend my warm thanks to, to Carmen, uh, uh, Carmen Esteves and uh, Carmen Bello uh, for their organizational support in organizing, uh, in, yeah, in organizing this, this training. Without them, um, the training would not have been uh, uh, possible. Um, I, I don't know, uh, I can see in the chat some problems with the sound. Can you hear me all well? You can go on to the chat. Vasiliki, maybe well. if you if you remove the camera, it will be better. Because the sound okay. is... Okay. Okay. Let me just, uh, let me just um, uh, remove the headset to try this. And, and if not, I will close the camera. Um, um, what about now? Is it better? Is it better? Can you hear me well? Yes. Now it is better. It's better. Yeah. Let's let's try it like that and see. Uh, is it is it is it better? Yes. Okay. So, all right. It's better. Then I would like I, I would prefer not to close the camera. But if it's necessary, I, I will do. Okay. Thank you very much for letting me know uh, in the in the chat. So let me uh, share my presentation. Um, just give me a second. So after fixing uh, the sound, again, um, I want to welcome you all to this to this training, and uh, we hope you find it uh, useful. This training is about explaining the widening program in simple terms uh, for, uh, for the eyes of the Pillar 2 NCPs. This is so because uh, the widening program is not only uh, for, uh, it's not only for capacity building. As it progresses, it, st it starts touching upon um, other parts of Horizon. And, uh, and all these policies that are uh, behind this one program extend, uh, um, extend to many more applicants. Of course, uh, in, in, uh, in, in widening countries, but uh, they intensify collaboration with internationally leading counterparts that come at times in non-widening countries. Also, uh, the European Commission would like to um, reinforce this, uh, this uh, if I may say, um, collaborations. And this is why we thought of uh, holding a special uh, training for a pillar two or even newcomer widening NCPs who do not know a lot of things about widening so that you can uh, uh, guide your clients better. Um, let me see, we've got something in the in the chat, okay. All right, so just give me a second. All right, so, um, so we're going to explain in very, very simple terms the whitening. Uh, from the registrations, uh, we got a very, very common request that the expectation for this training is to understand the whitening instrument. And not only to understand the widening uh, instruments, but to uh, be able to refer easier the clients. So, um, 
is about me or my action. So I have been a national contact point for widening in Greece since uh, 2014. Uh, I work for, for the Foundation for Research and Technology. It is a research center that holds an innovation unit, Praxis Network. Uh, I'm part of this unit. I have I've been working uh, for that unit since uh, 2009. Uh, I've I've been through a lot of um, client-oriented positions, and um, and um, the last few years I have been a full-time NCP. Since 2014, Greece. Um, I mean, at, back at that time I was widening NCP. Greece was not uh, a widening country as it is now. So um, I was an NCP back then when there was little interest uh, about the widening program itself. So I got a lot of knowledge from the NCP network called, uh, that was called NCP WideNet back then. And now uh, I'm a proud member of its continuation of its successful project, NCP WideRNet. So I'm also uh, looking after climate at cluster five, climate energy mobility. Uh, most, um, uh, and I usually uh, take care of a lot of the mobility inquiries and the mobility support to clients, but uh, as mobility is so much interrelated with with energy, I I still I, I, I touch a bit of energy as well. My background is business administration and humanities, and I'm really trying to complete my master's degree on innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, I also have a lot of um, a, a spherical overview of Horizon Europe because widening uh, touches upon a lot of issues. Um, yeah, the, the work program itself uh, uh, touches in and the transition, uh, it touches on infrastructures, Marie Curie. So, to do my job properly, I had to kind of um, um, learn a bit from other program parts of Horizon. As an NCP, uh, my, my main challenges, my main challenges is not only explaining uh, the program uh, to the widening applicants, okay? It's, it's not just that, it's to uh, can, kind of make them understand that they can adjust it to their needs, uh, as well as uh, refer uh, an applicant with a given funding need to the right instrument. It could be widening, it could be not. So this is what I believe my, my main, main challenge. So um, I will stop sharing and I would like to take uh, a poll, okay? We've, we've prepared three very, very basic questions for you guys in order to understand more uh, about the people who are attending. So I stop share for a bit and uh, you uh, will see a poll in your screen if you could just answer so the first uh, question is do you come uh from a widening country yes or no okay so i end the call and i will share the results so 70% of you come from a whitening country and 30% do not. So um, let's do, let's move on to the second poll. Uh, again, is the sound okay? We have some interruptions, but it generally is, is better, Vasiliki. All right, I will try to, okay, I will then um, uh, turn off the video, okay? And just please let me know if, if the sound improves. Is it, is, it, is, it, is it better? It is okay now, yes. All right, so uh, we're launching now the second question. Are you a Pillar 2 NCP? So it looks like 60% yes and 40% uh, no. I will end the poll and share the results. Um, so 58% yes, yeah, they are pillar to NCP and by 42% no. So next and last uh, question. 
So, are you involved in NCP projects dealing with the widening element? Yes or no? Okay, well, we see like 60% of people are involved in, uh, in an NCP uh, project, in, the, in one of the NCP projects that deal with the widening elements. So let's sh share the results. So 63% said yes. Uh, they, uh, okay, yes, yes, Groom, yes, I, I can see the chat, yes, of course, yes. All right, so it's still applicable to, to 63%. Uh, almost 40% of the colleagues say, say no. Anyway, so I will stop and I will uh, go back uh, to the presentation. All right, so um, uh, the menu for today is that uh, we will um, describe in very simple terms the, um, the main instrument of widening so that you have a good idea of what these are about. Um, and then we will proceed with some complementary instrument. We have made such a division in, in order to simplify things for you. We have a Q&A, uh, a break for lunch, and at 2.20 uh, we will describe uh, some opportunities for, for Pillar 2 uh, applicants and some synergies with the NCP Wideranet project that is currently running. We have the pleasure to host Katarzyna Valcik Matosic. She is a coordinator. She will provide us with an overview of what NCP Wideranet does. And then me as, um, as a work package leader for matchmaking will provide you like a brief overview of what the NCP uh, Widera project has for you and will provide you with a so you uh, know who, um, who to contact should you uh, need to provide some opportunities for your uh, clients. So let's go back to share screen again. Thank you very much for your participation at the poll. And we move on um, with the presentation. So, um, as all of you have heard, um, widening is, is a horizontal set of measures that is, you know, uh, that is, you know, undergoing pillar one, pillar two and pillar three. It is called widening participation and strengthening of the European research area. Today, we're going to focus on widening participation and strengthening. All right. Um, so uh, the, the widening is, is very much a very special uh, tool. Uh, let's say um, a, a set of, of, uh, of measures. Before I can tell you, first of all, it's different between widening and pillar two, uh, please have in mind that in Horizon 2020, uh, the widening participation had a budget of 80, of, of, uh, of um, 800 euro, okay? Now uh, it has about, sorry, uh, almost 3 billion euro uh, budget. So that reflects a tendency of the European Commission to reduce converge so to, to reduce disparity in research and innovation between high innovator countries and moderate innovator countries. This is based on certain measures. So let's take things at the beginning. What's the main difference of widening and pillar two? Well, in widening, you don't have to use the money, all right, primarily to scale up technologies or uh, develop as beyond state of art uh, innovation okay no that's not it really it might be a little a little part of that but not the, it, is, it is money within a very competitive research and innovation framework program that is devoted to raising capacity of uh, research-based institutions of widening countries 
we will say which are the widening countries, but please keep in mind that widening countries are uh, um, countries that um, uh, are emerging powers in research and innovation. They are not yet where um, countries are. So it's like catching up countries in research. It is money dedicated to advance the strategic agenda of risk organizations or research teams, uh, because we've got several, several um, uh, measures, which uh, are, some of them are institutional level, some of them are at the research team level. So it, it's a measure of your objectives. Uh, but uh, at the macro level, uh, countries have the ability to modernize the research and innovation systems. I mean, if a country gets a lot, a lot of um, uh, widening projects, uh, it is uh, anticipated by the European Commission that, that, that it will have like a structural impact in the country. And of course, develop expertise in the mobilization of funds. And when I say funds, I mean European funds from uh, from uh, pillar uh, from uh, horizon and cohesion policy fund for example pre accession for the associated countries or um, or cohesion or, or sorry uh, european structural funds so um, you understand a little bit uh, even from this where things are gradually going now The widening eligibility criteria. Um, the widening program has specific geographical uh, criteria, but uh, but what do do they mean that the countries performing lower in research and innovation are considered widening, and therefore they will be able to take up the leading role, the coordinator's role, and together with the help of the advanced of the advanced partners, namely organizations that are internationally leading from a different country from the widening coordinator, may form a consortium and apply for a different call for pro oh, I mean for call of calls for proposals. Let me show you a very old graph. It's dated since uh, 2014. That was the first categorization of widening and non-widening uh, countries. So. Uh, the the horizontal bar it was the um, it it was like a compound indicator. Uh, sorry, that that line represents seventy percent performance on certain innovation on the EU average, and the countries below that line uh, with designated with the red uh, bars are considered. Binding. And those both are, are non widening, but of course things changed a little bit since 2014, and we can say that the uh, that um, the winning eligibility criteria means that the following research based organizations can be the coordinators uh, from the following countries, Bulgaria, Croatia, Cyprus. Czech, Estonia, Greece, Hungary, Latvia, Lithuania, Malta, Poland, Portugal, Romania, Slovakia, Slovenia. These are from member states. Uh, these are member states uh, that are catching up in research and innovation. And associated countries with similar research and innovation characteristics that have an association agreement to Horizon Europe, which is Albania, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Kosovo, Montenegro, North Macedonia, Serbia, Turkey, Armenia, Georgia, Moldova, Morocco, Tunisia, Ukraine, Faroe Islands. And of course, the outermost regions that apply to Spain, Portugal, and France. Um, the change um, uh, in comparison to the previous framework program was that Greece used to be and a widening, uh, sorry, an advanced uh, uh, partner. I mean, Greece was not a widening country, but it was a political decision to join the widening group. So the widening group consists of these uh, countries. So uh, the policy context, uh, I mean, there are two things. 
the European Research Area for Research and Innovation, and the European Research Policy Agenda. Actually, in, in very simple terms, what that means is that the European Commission wants to um, create a unified, uh, intangible um, European space so that ideas, people and technology circulate freely. In order to do that, it has to reduce the, um, the, the uh, disparity between re uh, for research and innovation between countries performing low and countries performing strong in research and innovation. So um, there are four main priorities that all widening calls are based. Prioritizing investment in reforms, that means going after green and digital transition. Um, it means uh, aligning national priorities to European ones. And also combining uh, funds, for example, framework money with uh, structural funds. The other one is improving access to excellence. That means um, the, the excellent practice should be um, it should be diffused as much as possible. Translating RNI results into the economy, that, that really um, targets um, excellent teams in widening countries wishing to uh, improve their commercialization uh, knowledge, their, their, their entrepreneurial skills, as well as target ecosystems. For example, the actors have to uh, better communicate uh, with each other, uh, I mean, complementary actors that are responsible for the knowledge transformation from research to end users. And deepening the era, the European research area means uh, responsible research and innovation, open science, reproducibility of results, and um, uh, promoting gender balance and free circulation of people. But when we say free circulation of people, we mean international, um, interdisciplinary and intersectoral mobility. Okay, um, if you have any questions, please uh, uh, write them on the chat and we, we are able to, and we will be able to uh, address them uh, around um, 145. So, the widening package, given all this, um, all, all this, um, let's say, um, lines uh, of uh, these priority lines, are the following. Okay, we've got uh, the we've got uh, the excellence at the heart of it, which will foster participation of widening applicants in pillar two uh, proposals. It will facilitate collaborative links within actors of the same ecosystem. It will contribute to reducing um, the research and innovation divide. Uh, we will have new, new, very, very, very new um, instruments like the HOPON, excellence initiatives, um, uh, other uh, measures for brain circulation. We will have an, an, an enhanced matchmaking uh, facility and national contact points will be uh, supported and motivated uh, to provide a, a pre-proposal check facility. So moving on, I hope it is clear so far. Uh, if not, we can pause for a few, like for a minute or so, because we are okay with the time. And if you have a question, it will be, I can answer it. Well, um, yeah, Morocco is not a horizon associated country, as a, a colleague says. Well, yes, negotiations are still ongoing, uh, but that's the main uh, announcement. I mean, that, that's the main position uh, of the work program so far. Okay, hoping that uh, association uh, agreements will, uh, co will be completed successfully. So. Let's start with a flagship uh, call, that is, which is uh, called Teaming for Excellence. Teaming for Excellence uh, is about building new or um, 
modernize existing centers of excellence. Uh, if I take the example of my country, Greece, I mean, uh, people tend to baptize ex center of excellence, everything, you know, everything. For the European Commission, however, excellence has resulted to have specific um, traits. And these are, we're looking for a modern structure that has scientific excellence, that possesses a critical mass of talent, knowledge, and infrastructures, that conducts interdisciplinary research, that um, it has innovation in its core and has entrepreneurial culture. Entrepreneurial culture does not necessarily mean funding spin-offs, okay? No. But it could also mean, you know, being bold, being innovative in your research, in creating new research streams, and really, um, for example, um, daring to provide answers through research innovation to pressing societal challenges. Of course, uh, innovation, I mean, when innovation is at the heart of, of a modern structure, that entails engagement with local ecosystem, industry, and SMEs, and features in its structure a triple helix activity, which is research, innovation, training, and education. So if uh, a facility is doing only research, is not a center of excellence. It has to do also innovation, at least uh, have some extroversy uh, and be associated with somehow to training and education. Otherwise, it cannot be a center of excellence. Also, uh, centers of excellence, in order to be excellent, they have to kind of detach from their founders. So they have to have a decision-making autonomy and establish revenue streams to be financially sustainable. Apart from that, uh, an alignment with the European Charter for Researcher is needed, a gender balance um, approach that will be that, that will characterize its structure and its policies. It should have modern management practices and, of course, permanent connection with its mentors, the advanced partners. So let's say let us talk. Uh, few things about uh, this call okay it's not to give you too many details but just to give you what i believe the essentials okay so it is a, a two-stage call that means you i mean um, at the first invitation you submit a 10-page proposal with just some uh, i mean uh, outlining a conceptual note for that future center and if that is successful then another call opens where you submit 30 pages call about, I mean, uh, the, having the full fledged um, description of the center of excellence. The budget per proposal is 8 to 15 million euros. The duration is six years. The eligibility, there should be a coordinator in a widening country. Uh, it could be a research based organization or even a national regional authority or a research funding agency, but I will explain to you why. And these, uh, so the coordinator has to team up with at least one internationally leading research-based institution from a different country, uh, member state or associated country to Horizon Europe, okay? So we've seen a lot of participation uh, with uh, one or two um, advanced partners, as we could call this. And um, and usually they come from France, from Germany, from Italy, from Spain, Netherlands, um, Austria, Ireland. I mean, a lot of countries. Um, we have also seen that as as long as the minimum eligibility criteria is met, then we can have other people, or, uh, sorry, other organizations, either from the same country or another way to country participate. Uh, but in order uh, for this, uh, for, for, for a proposal submitted under a team, a team for excellence, it has to attract complementary funding from national authorities. That means that um, it should 
bring along um, national money coming mostly from the um, structural funds or a combination of funds, private funds, European structural funds, national funds, etc. So the, the rationale uh, for this combined funding is that um, the, that the horizon will co will cover the operational uh, expenses for the center. It could be any startup costs for the establishment of the center and its operations. So um, it co so it covers salaries, legal expenses, recruitment costs, uh, managerial costs, salaries, of course are for personal cost of any kind, researcher, non-researcher, permanent or, or temporary, and 10% of the grant can be allocated to a pure research project. So um, the national funds can be allocated at least for buildings and building the necessary uh, laboratories. Um, so it's very, it, they are like full-fledged projects, uh, very, uh, I mean, uh, they require heavy investment and of course that they should be very much related to the smart specialization strategy of the um of the um of the country submitting a proposal um here i'm bringing you some statistics from horizon europe because we don't have any any formalized statistics yet for horizon europe as uh the currently the the phase two is open for submission so in terms of the advanced partners if i might say so uh, they come from germany united kingdom finland uh france sweden austria switzerland netherlands uh ireland italy so uh a lot of advanced uh partners i mean from non white countries got a very very good share of uh of the money of money i mean you, you can see there are several millions and sometimes um i mean they were i mean their contribution i mean their uh contribution from the participation for their funding from the participation to the european uh projects of the of the widening nature in teaming it was very close to that of the uh, widening countries supporting coordinators. So it was a really good opportunity for non-widening participants. This is where I'm trying to get to. Now, now in respect of the um, of the Horizon Europe submissions for the first stage, um, a lot of um, proposals came from Greece, then from Portugal, Poland. Uh, the Czech Republic, Cyprus, Slovakia, uh, Slovenia, Estonia, uh, Turkey, Hungary, etc. Now, um, we're moving into another uh, commodity, if I might say so. Before I go on, I would like to ask you, uh, I will stop sharing, I would like to ask you, how is the sound? Is, this, is the sound okay? Okay, all right, so should I um, open the camera? May I try a bit? All right, okay. Uh, if the sound does not work, okay, I will just shut it down again. Okay, again, I will, sorry. I will reshare. All right, now we're moving to twinning. Is the sound still okay? All right. Yes. So, uh, yes, thank you. So, the twinning, what is the scope actually? Twinning is not at um, organizational, uh, at organizational level. It goes down to the institution or to the research team. So we have witnessed that a lot of institutions, I mean, research-based institution, um, got a lot of research teams submitting proposals. And each um, research team, for example, partner with advanced countries, uh, with, with partners from advanced countries. So with respect of the twinning scope, uh, it's about stimulating the scientific excellence 
and innovation capacity of the coordinator. Again, the coordinator should be a research-based institu research institution coming from a widening country, okay? What is the challenge here? Utilize the experience and best practices of internationally leading partners who should be part of the consortium. Um, the, um, for the consortium, we need at least two internationally leading countries, other mean different from uh, the country of the widening coordinator, all right? So we need a transfer of knowledge, transfer of best practices from um, the advanced partners to, the wide, to their widening uh, friend. The proposal should include um, arrangements for new or going uh, research partnerships and strengthen the, re the, the research management and administration staff. Hey, this is very, very much important because it is believed that widening countries lack proper uh, research management support. Uh, so it is important to have a dedicated task or, I don't know, and even a dedicated work package for that regard. The activities, it's short-term staff exchanges, expert visits outside or, uh, or virtual trainings, workshops, conference attendance, joint summer school type of activities. Dissemination and outreach activities, meaning reaching out to the ecosystem, preferably by the quadruple helix approach. Now, with respect to the uh, teams can uh, um, uh, from between uh, 800,000 to 1.5 million euro. Um, again, it is a coordination and support action, and uh, and the funding rate is 100%. So all all expenses are fully covered, I mean, by 100%. Here, however, we have a derogation from the standard coordination and support action. That means that 30% of the grants can be allocated to a research project. And if that is, is so, 70% of the entire research activities, personnel, consumables, equipment, should be absorbed, should be directed to the widening coordinator. So basically, what we have, we have a training program by 7%, by 30% a research component, okay? Uh, things like um, open science and gender equality or gender aspects in the uh, scientific subject matter should be considered. Here I would like to show you some submissions for the, uh, for the Horizon Europe. Uh, here, um, uh, um, 388 proposals were submitted and 103 were approved for funding. Um, we can see a very, very high participation of Germany, which is not widening. So, that, so this is indicative of its networking in, in the majority of the proposals. Italy, uh, Greece, uh, which is a well-known country, Netherlands, Sweden, Belgium, um, Denmark, and then we catch up with uh, with Latin countries. So it's a funding opportunity also for um, non widening participants as they participate as mentors and get a great deal of funding. Now we go to the Eritreans. The Eritreans is another staple, as a, uh, if I could say, it's another capacity building, but it's a little bit different. It's again not at the entire organizational level, of course, it's not forbidden, but it's more at the institutional level. So, what do we have here? We want to bring, we want to identify a researcher, an outstanding researcher of any nationalities, and we would like to bring her or him to settle for a few years in the widening country. That director should enjoy freedom from the host organization, and the host organization should commit to that. So we could have, for example, um, an interdisciplinary uh, research center with a lot of institution, and many institutions might be submitting proposals for an era chair, okay? It's not like one organization, one era chair. Uh, we have like a comment in the chat Okay, uh, we will deal with this later. So, um, so in that era chair that will come for a few years should enjoy autonomy and should have a resource allocation 
uh, freedom, okay? Where possible or where relevant, it may undertake to do duties. And in order to make it easier for applicants, um, it, it can be a part-time or full-time tenure. Um, all right, so the modus operandi here, I mean, the, the submission operandi is that we, uh, it's one organization uh, identifies the era chair and together they submit a proposal. Uh, up to now, it could have been a consortium, I mean, for the era chair to bring along its current employer. It could be another research institution from another country and jointly submit a proposal, but that will not be uh, um, available. I mean, that, that will not be uh, possible anymore. So the era chair should invoke, should provoke some structural changes, okay? Uh, so that's a basic difference with the, with the twinning. That, um, that in the, with, the, with the twinning, um, we need a lot of influx of, of knowledge and best practices, whereas in the era chair, we need we more uh, structural changes. I, I can see some uh, comments uh, that, uh, that the Czech Republic is missing in the graph. That was from the European Commission. We can uh, go back to it uh, during the, the, the Q&A, okay, and have a look at this. So, um, so what is a structural change, actually? It's that the era chair is coming with a certain agenda of uh, some uh, structural changes that should be kind of approved before, beforehand by the host organization and set up a permanent research team. That permanent research team should be um, should be uh, formed uh, based on open and merit-based procedures and only 15% of that of, of its members should be um, should have prior contractual obligations with the organization with, with the host organization i mean and um it should set up um a leader uh with that team within the first three years and ideally offer it a permanent position it could be the case that you can have an air chair and a, and a, and a leader to the team or the air chair if it, if he or she plans to stay uh for for a long time in the host organization, he or she could apply also for that position for the for the team leader. So we can have two distinct persons or two uh, or one person. But there has to be an arrangement then for a more permanent employer employment. The eligible costs are salaries uh, for the air chair and the team members, recruitment costs, travels, administrative costs, uh, journal publication costs, IP patenting. Etc. All right. What is not eligible is large infrastructures. Uh, up to ten percent of the research grant could go to uh, to to research cost, but um, the grant can um, start from uh, um, one and a half million to two point five million. So this is a lot of money, and we need institutional reforms that will enable attractiveness of the host institution or uh, or the organization in terms of brain circulation fundraising and sustainability in order and in order to do that you need to establish some proper um fundraising processes and obviously recruit uh, rmas research management and administrators here are some uh air chair uh, data from the European Commission for the program configuration. If some countries are missing, it, it it might be because we have made a small a, a miniature a scale down uh, of this graph. So it could be possible that something is missing, but of the scale, not because of some country was uh, has participated, but it's not taking into account in the graph. So um, it was the air chair was very popular and still is popular in Poland, Czech Republic, Greece as a new widening country, Bulgaria, Estonia, Latvia, Cyprus, etc. Now, um, we have three minutes uh, before I continue. I would like to see into the chat whether there are some questions. 
So, uh, from Solène, I would bring the question, is there a minimum number of person to this integrated team? Does permanent mean that they must have a long-term contract? Well, thanks for the question. It's a very challenging question. It is not a mean, there's not a minimum number for the team, okay? Now, in respect of the permanence thing, okay, uh, there are two explanations, all right? Because these are very open-ended issues, okay? The one is that, that, I mean, this research team should be like part of that institution. Maybe it should be part of, of its, uh, I don't know, uh, organizational chart. And there should be permanent provisions that the members, that that, that team should be staffed by members, okay? Uh, so it could be long-term contract, it could be short-term contract, but if it's short-term, it should be um, replenished, I mean, uh, by other team members, so the, it should be permanently um, um, staffed. Its team leader ideally should have a permanent uh, position. Uh, and, um, and given that some structural changes are needed, it, it might be the case that there might be some provisions. I don't know how easy this this turns out. That uh, there is as much as less turnover as possible. Okay. Now, for very small universities in the outermost regions, this call is very difficult to apply uh, for. Yeah, for the reason of the permanent team. Yeah. I understand. It's not only the the, the problem of the um, outermost regions. I mean, um, if I'm to, to the extent that I was concerned as NCP, uh, also Greek teams ha had had a problem. Not not so much the research centers, but the universities per se. Uh, they had a huge problem with this. They didn't know how to uh, go about it. So actually, they stepped out of their comfort zone and they made a step that they will do as much as possible to open a position in the related fields of science and they will extend it to that team leader or to the area chair. This is uh, a very difficult uh, issue. I understand the complexity, but um, the European Commission wants to uh, the, the beneficiary organizations to have some sort of um, uh, to push them to go one step further. So, um, Let's move uh, to the second part of the presentation. In the program, it says complementary instruments, air fellowships, air talent, excellence hubs, hope on, and the outlook for the, for the future. So up to now, we saw the very, very basic capacity building instruments. The European Commission expects that the outcome of this instrument is at, uh, enhanced um, scientific capacity, enhanced innovation capacity, visibility, attractiveness, uh, and some, um, let's say, and, 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 and more participation in Pillar 2 proposals, along with their non-widening counterparts, I mean, the mentors. So, however, we will see now some complementary instruments that target the system level, and the brain circulation of researchers, as well as innovators, research support staff, etc. Let's start with the, with the most popular, which is the HOPON. Uh, many of you might have heard of the HOPON scheme. What is actually the HOPON scheme? And it is promoting participation of widening organizations uh, and for, I mean, applicants of widening countries, that this is what it means. In Horizon Europe, uh, Cluster 2 re co uh, current research and innovation actions in the EIC Pathfinder. Actually, what that means that um, projects are funded under Pillar 2 or the EIC Pathfinder with the current, with a valid grant agreement, they are automatic, who have no widening partner in their consortium, they should be, I mean, they are automatically eligible for the hope on. That means that they could take on board a widening partner. All right. Um, somebody might ask, yeah, okay. And uh, 
Yes, yes, sorry, yes, yes, pillar two, yes, yes. Thanks, Natasha, pillar two, I'm very sorry, okay? Yeah, pillar two. So that means um, that if you're a coordinator and you have a project running under uh, pillar two or ESC Pathfinder, your project automatically appears uh, in a certain list in the hop on call. If you go to the funding and analysis portal and scroll down and you go to the call update, you are you will be able to click a link and get you there. So, uh, of course, no partner, no, no widening partner should be in the consortium. And therefore, uh, the, the widening partner should um, make an agreement with a coordinator and the rest of the project partners that, yeah, we want that widening partner in. There should be a separate task or a separate work, uh, pack, uh, work uh, package for that widening partner. Um, and uh, within uh, um, the proposal to be submitted, um, the added value of the partner should be broadly demonstrated. Uh, the widening uh, partner might uh, take from uh, 200,000 to 500,000 and out of that 10% goes to the coordinator. But somebody might ask, okay, yeah, right. So uh, who, who will be eligible? Somebody, for example, who wants to get involved into hydrogen project, but has no idea. No, some it's the, the rationale behind this is mobilizing excellence. And mobilizing excellence means that you are knowledgeable as a research-based institution. You are very well aware, you are very much capable of um, uh, making a value-adding contribution, but you lack the networks, you lack, you lack the connections uh, to be invited here and there at the consortia. So that Hopon scheme wants to bridge that gap. Uh, the next cutoff is November 10, 2022, and uh, it's around an 80 page proposal that should be submitted by the coordinator, but of course, it should be uh, drafted with uh, the widening partner. Also, as an, an extra information, I can tell you that if you, I mean, that it makes sense for the hope one to join if you have a project that is, um, that is at, at its beginning, maybe in its first two years. I mean, if a project is nearly its runtime, of course, it doesn't make sense to uh, to add on a widening partner. So let's go to something else. Uh, the European Excellence Initiative. Uh, this is a, a call resembles a lot of Erasmus, and it's about strengthening the capacity of excellence in the higher education institutions and surrounding ecosystem. Um, here we need a consortium of at least two higher education institutions from one or more widening countries and at least two internationally leading institutions from two different countries, member states or associated countries to Horizon. Um, consortia um, can receive up to 2 million euros for capacity building actions. But what are these actually, all right? So the Actually, the essence is to integrate a seamless collaboration between uh, among the universities of the consortium to uh, elaborate on a, a cooperation strategy, uh, identify some, some institutional reforms that should be uh, taken place, um, share um, infrastructures, uh, research infrastructures, and, and become like a seamless mobility network for um, students, uh, professors, and, and uh, researchers. Of course, another thing is to connect the European, so, so the, uh, the, the university with its ecosystem uh, and, and really do some things together because you're the, a, a university has a social responsibility within the ecosystem it is operating, okay? And last but not least, uh, you, I mean, the, the, the universities taking part should connect research to their educational activity. So it's really a good opportunity for 
universities in widening countries and for uh, internationally leading universities in non widening countries to really team up and uh, do things together. So it's like a small twinning. Well, um, okay, I see a question in the chat. I will deal with this a little bit later. And uh, let's move to the um, to the uh, excellence hubs. Well, what are the excellence hubs? They are collaborative um, instruments. You might have heard of them. You may you may have not. It's widening um, funding opportunities targeted uh, targeted at the ecosystem level. Um, but let's take things at the beginning because it's a very unique core. So the the excellence hubs is is not a twinning. Um, what is it actually? It's place based ecosystems, meaning regional ecosystems that encompass mutually reinforcing actors from the academia and the research, business entities, public authorities responsible for uh, policy making or for adopting solutions and societal actors civil society, cultural actors, end users, the media, etc. So these are uh, um, these are the uh, quadruple helix com components. Okay, you will hear a lot about this methodology. So it is about bringing together actors from from each place based ecosystem along uh, a research and innovation idea. So this, these uh, actors should uh, through actions should identify what is their role in the transformation of knowledge from research to society. That's the one thing. And uh, how to collaborate each other with, with, with each other on a, more, on a more permanent basis. So that's the essence of that. And of course, that abides to the third um, pillar of the era, as I described earlier, which is um, translating research and innovation results uh, to the market. This proposal, so we've got consortium requesting from three to five million euros. It's not little, it's, it's a lot of money, all right? We need at least two place-based um, research and innovation ecosystems from wider countries, all right? And we need quadruple helix participation, either uh, by individual um, components of the quadruple helix. For example, we can have like, um, let's say, I don't know, um, an ecosystem in Crete for the lasers and an ecosystem, uh, I don't know, in one of the regions of, of the Czech Republic, okay? And one more region in Bulgaria, all right? And each ecosystem should have represented through umbrella organizations or individual organizations uh, to form a quadruple helix per ecosystem. As I've said at the beginning, uh, coordination support actions represent a derogation from Horizon uh, Europe. Uh, so uh, they include 30% or around that, um, some sort of research component between uh, the members of the, uh, of the consortium. Of course, uh, partners from non-widened countries are eligible to participating, contributing know-how, maybe, I don't know, if we have like um, a French partner or a German partner or uh, a partner from the Netherlands who have like a strong place-based ecosystems, they can join, get a, not as much money as um, the widening partners and really um, inject some know-how. Um, other um, aspects of the proposal is that this place-based ecosystem, uh, are, I mean, they, 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 they join a consortium, they form a consortium, and they elaborate on their common needs in terms of research and innovation, whether some pilots are needed to 
take their results to a next level, what kind of investment would that need, and then you need activities to mobilize actors, uh, have, uh, I don't know, even, uh, even international, intersectoral, uh, and interdisciplinary circumference. Okay, uh, we've got some questions that we will deal later with this. So, um, here um, uh, we've got some statistics from, from the program committee, and the Excellence Hubs attracted a lot of attention to Greek beneficiaries, Romanian, Cypriot, Estonian, Hungarian, uh, Lithuanian, Slovenian, uh, etc. And then we've got Denmark, Belgium, that Finland, that were quite popular. I mean, in respect of their participation into the ecosystem as injecting knowledge. Now we're going into something a little bit different. That is called the Air Fellowships. So we are moving into brain circulation. So in terms of brain circulation, we saw the we we, we got a glimpse from horizon uh, from air chairs. But now we're moving into something different. Is the Era Fellowship? What is this? So actually, we've got the basic uh, call for the postdoctoral fellowships under Marie Curie, right? So, what is the point here? That if we have, if there are uh, applications from host organizations established in widening countries, they pass all the thresholds and they do not get funding because their ranking was not that high to secure to, to secure them funding, then, uh, of course, upon their consent, they are automatically transferred to uh, the widening um, funds and they have a second chance to be funded. So uh, for the um, for the current call, um, which is um, which uh, will be open until uh, mid September, um, fifty applications from widening from host organizations from widening countries that did not um, make it in the um, uh, initial uh, uh, call of uh, Marie Curie Sklodowska actions. Have a second chance to find it. Of course, they should have uh, passed the relevant thresholds. Okay, if something is below threshold, it won't be eligible in in a uh, in in the uh, uh, fellowships, meaning the second chance by the white man. Now we've got an open an interesting opportunity. Uh, the era talents. The era talents um, is like more like a pilot thing in the widening. Uh, in the widening uh, uh, work program, and it um, has to do with promoting interoperability of careers and employability of research and innovation talents across sectors. So it targets the three eyes that you might have known from the Marie Sklodowska Curie, the international, intersectoral, interdisciplinary. The eligibility criteria here is at least three independent legal entities in three. Uh, sorry, that there's a small uh, mistake in the eligibility criteria. We need at least three legal entities. Okay, um, that will pair with uh, two uh, with, with at least two uh, different legal entities from uh, from widening countries. So we need, it's like a twinning of academia and non-academic partners. We need at least two from widening countries and at least three uh, from different uh, countries that, um, that, that, that these organizations are somehow internationally, that they're, they're good at something, all right? So we need like, uh, we have the core, which are the widening and the non-widening injecting, uh, let's say knowledge, injecting um, uh, best practices. However, it's like a collaboration between academia and business and actually in, uh, uh, and also 
from other actors uh, apart from academia and business. So these two should collaborate on, on, on certain research and innovation projects and, um, and um, let's say, establish relationships between them through secondments of staff. That's the essence. Really, it resembles a little bit of the networks of the Marie Curie um, uh, work program. So, 12 projects are expected to be funded, and the budget for proposals is one to three uh, million. Uh, part of the eligible activities are experimentation on novel research methods, perhaps, and just sexual mobility, uh, academia, non academia cooperation, uh, training and researcher entrepreneurship. Actually, the essence here is that uh, researchers should acquire soft skills. And soft skills can be acquired by having some tenures from three to 24 months to non-academic um, organization. So that knowledge inflow can go from, let's say, their researcher to the non-research, uh, which is good. And of course, the researcher acquired a different perspective and that may include also entrepreneurial uh, um, skills because you will see a researcher might see what is the context of applying his or her knowledge and transforming it into uh, something different. Now ending uh, my presentation I would like to talk to you about the future what the work package the, the work program for the next two years will look like. Um, to begin with, all the staple um, actions will be there. Uh, the, 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 the twinning, the air chairs, uh, oh, sorry, teaming for the centers of excellence, uh, twinning, and the, um, and the air chairs. There will be some differences, of course. Uh, for example, instead of 12 projects to be funded for new centers of excellence, this time, 18 uh, will be possible to get funded. In terms of the twinning, uh, here we have two changes. Instead of 103 projects, we, uh, that number will be reduced to 75, unfortunately. That was because it was thought it, wore, it, it didn't generate a lot of interest. And there will be also a Green Deal component within that. We don't know exactly how that be, how this will be, but um, the Green Deal will be a lot of, will be um, very much evident. Also, uh, the, the, the type of funding will be lump sum, which means that um, funding will be provided, will be provided uh, based on the uh, results uh, to be, or the outcomes to be achieved, not on the allocation of months. Uh, also, uh, with respect to the air chairs, we will have like um, above, uh, instead of 32 projects, we, uh, around 45 will be funded. Uh, the excellence hubs uh, will, will remain around the same, but with more budget, up to 6 million uh, per project can be available, as long as they include an extra me mentoring scheme for uh, Ukrainian um, partners or partners from the Eastern partnerships. Um, so that, that is a, a, a change. Also, um, as uh, we saw earlier, the European Commission through its era communication and the overall policy approach is to mobilize synergies, synergies between uh, Horizon 20, for Europe, <coughs> sorry, with um, structural funds, interreg, or anything, or other program that is administered by the member states. So it's um, it has devised another core, which is pure not novelty. It is called pathways to synergies. That means that um, we will have to mold the upward synergies and the downward synergies. So in the upward synergy, we will have a group of at least three different public or private research entities from at least two widening countries that were beneficiaries 
of pro of national projects, you know, mainly from interreg or um, structural funds, etc. The goal is to really, uh, as long as, as the scientific discipline is now similar, to form a consortium and identify funding opportunities under Horizon Europe to take their ideas and their uh, project results further. Of course, non-widening applicants can participate as long as their participation is, is duly justified. Now, the downward synergies is a little bit something more challenges. It's like, uh, I mean, it's like, you know, um, uh, like getting from Horizon 2020 or Horizon Europe projects from uh, the, the, the framework projects to uh, seek sequential funding, funding for pilots, funding for something else. There is a continuation of that research, of these research results under uh, national schemes or, I mean, schemes funded under uh, European structural uh, funds, interreg, or whatever else, or whatever other programs that are managed by national, um, uh, national funding agencies. So um, this, that was all for my part. Uh, we are we are almost on time to begin our our Q and A. Uh, I will stop sharing.